Hey guys, today I wanted to talk to you about making money with primal nethers as a crafter in the Burning Crusade classic. In the Burning Crusade, we see a lot more competitive armor pieces that are able to be crafted from professions. This is great for the crafting economy, so as people love to level up new characters, they need to get them um, those early strong pieces of gear. And the most accessible pieces of endgame gear is crafted. Today I wanted to talk to you about making money in the Burning Crusade beyond the normal advice such as uh, make cloth cooldowns, make make primal mites, farm herbs, farm more. Like you've heard all that before. So I wanted to focus in on just being a crafter and getting these primal nethers and using them to make items for other players. So as a crafter, if you play the game fre frequently, you can make pretty good money doing this. So you'll be able to fund running your endgame adventures, so you should be able to like afford your consumables um, and make a decent amount of money. And you can do so without necessarily needing to take part of the meta of the money-making professions. So what is a Primal Nether and why do you care about it? A uh, Primal Nether is a buy on pickup crafted material that is used in many of the recipes in the Burning Crusade. They have a small chance to drop from some of the normal dungeon bosses, but will always drop from the final boss of a heroic mode dungeon. They can also be purchased from the badge of Justice Vendor in Shatraf. In patch 2.4, primal nethers become tradable, but hopefully they'll be bind on pickup until the final phase of TBC when Sunwell is released, as that's how it was in the original game. So how is this going to make you money? It's no secret that most servers in WoW Classic have an incredible amount of bloat in the gold economy. This means that things are going to be crazy expensive in the game. So if you have to buy anything from other people that are out farming it or hoping for drops, it's going to just cost a ton. Since Primal Nethers are buying on pickup, this gives crafters an opportunity to charge a good chunk of gold for each of their crafts. If you are a crafter, pay attention to market prices in the first couple weeks, and I would highly recommend trying to get some of those patterns. And this means running heroic dungeons and focusing on specific rep grinds. Now let's talk about recipes. I won't go into details for how to get each pattern in this video, but I will leave a link to a spreadsheet in the description below if you want more information about where these patterns drop from. So first I want to talk about engineering. There is a gun that you can make. It's called the Gyro Balanced Corium Destroyer, and this is a buy non pickup epic item with a socket. These guns will sell very well early into TBC. They are quite expensive to make. They take an enormous amount of materials, <laughs> but that is an option for making a little bit of extra money as an engineer. All right, let's move on to blacksmithing. In TBC, we see a ton of BOE epics that are introduced for blacksmiths to craft. A lot of the early weapons that you are able to make for other players are going to be pretty strong until they start doing the raiding content. There are also several other item slots that a blacksmith can craft, mainly gloves and bracers, and some helms. As an enchanter, you use a primal nether in the enchant sure-footed. This permanently enchants boots to increase snare and root resistance by 5% and increases hit rating by 10. As a tailor, you have a lot of different recipes that require the primal nethers. The spell strike hood and pants set is considered to be one of the stronger options for um, early level casters and can carry you all the way through tier 5 content. The white men's hood and pants set is a great option for healers. And you will also use a primal nether in the spell threads, which are a permanent enchant that you put on the pants slot that all casters and healers will need. Leather workers also have a lot of fine on equip epics that, that are available for crafting. You can make some pretty strong head, glove, and feet pieces. And these pieces will um, help get you into those first tiers of raids. Leather workers can also make um, an armor pouch and a quiver for hunters that gives an increase to their ranged attack speed. And there are a few other BOE epics that leather workers can make as well. 
And while tailors made the caster and healer leg enchants, leather workers will make the attack power and stamina and agility and crit strike for all of the melee and hunter classes. So now I want to talk a little bit about dungeon etiquette. When you are running a hero, I always like to ask in the party if anyone's going to need the nether for crafting anything. I only do this to head off the awkward um, moment at the end of the, the run when someone rolls on wins another and they have no idea what it is and they don't even have a crafting profession that can use it. I think communicating these things is important when you are in the middle of a run. And it's just a good best practice to have when interacting with others on your server. I made this video just to show that you don't necessarily need to farm primal fires and you don't necessarily need to be an alchemist or an herbalist um, or a tailor using cloth cooldowns to make money in the game. You can do pretty well just by playing the game, doing some group content, and selling people what they need that you can craft. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoy the content that I'm making here, please give me a subscribe and a thumbs up on this video, and I'll continue to make more TBC content as we get closer to launch. Beta, woo!